hi i hope everyone has had an awesome awesome week um we are at our last month of this quarter and we're going to get started talking about god's correction to the children of israel and our lesson this week is entitled the people sin against god and it comes from exodus 32 chapter chapter 32 verses 1 through 14. so let's have a quick uh, moment of prayer and get into our lesson today father we come to you thank you for life for health for strength thank you for your word as a guide unto our feet now, God, we ask that you show us the way that you want us to go. We ask all this in your son Jesus name. Amen. So let's just go ahead and start with our lesson. And let's start with verse one. Just just this first verse. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us for as for for this moses the man that brought us up out of the land of egypt we what not what has become of him there's a lot to unpack in that first verse so let's just hang out there for just a moment so at the end of last week's lesson we saw that the description told us that moses he's going to be up on the mount for 40 days and 40 nights and during this time frame verse 1 tells us that the children of Israel they become impatient and they go to Aaron Aaron is Moses brother and at our lesson last week this is the appropriate person they should go to because Moses had given instruction that Aaron and Ur were to be the judges over the children in his absence so they're going to the right person and Aaron is supposed to deal with the matters of the people. So that that's what he's supposed to do. So they did the appropriate they went to the appropriate person, but they asked for an inappropriate thing because they want Aaron to make us a God. And they say that this God, this made up God, we want him to be the one that goes before us. That that meaning that this God is going to be a protector, a provider, a leader for them. So, not only do they want to make up their own God, they're actually changing their own story because they're changing how they've been delivered out of the hands of the Egyptian and out of bondage. Not only are they disrespectful of God, but they're disrespectful of Aaron's brother Moses because they say, this Moses, that sounds so nasty. <laughs> this Moses, like they're saying this dude, you know, that just to put it in a more modern context they're implying that Moses was the one that brought them out of Egypt and so again they're changing their story that's an interesting thing to me so let's see how Aaron responds to what the people have asked for him so let's read verses 2 through 6 and Aaron said unto them break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me and all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron and he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it into a molten calf and they said these be thy gods O Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and when Aaron saw it he built an altar before it and Aaron made proclamation and said tomorrow is a feast of the Lord and they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play so let's go back to verse 2 that verse starts off saying and Aaron said unto them every time I have ever read these verses I always want to believe that Aaron's going to say something different than what he does. <laughs> but he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't do what I expected him to do. I really thought after they had talked so much junk about his brother that he would say something else. But he doesn't. 
Instead, he directs the people to go get their gold. The gold they had came out of with Egypt with. Um, to make a calf. So, why would he want to make a calf out of this gold? Perhaps it was a reminder of Egypt. Because Egyptians had gods that were symbolized through cows so a calf would have been a way to remind them of that oppression that they keep thinking was good for them um it could have been a sim also baal baal being the religion the one of the gods of the canaan people that they're now uh having contact with beginning to have contact with so whatever the explanation as to why he fashioned this cow it really doesn't matter it still was against what they were supposed to do and they were not to worship that the people they respond to this golden calf that Aaron makes and they say these are the gods O Israel who brought us out of Egypt once again they're changing their deliverance story they're going to change it to this golden calf is the one that is responsible for bringing them up out of Egypt and so then as we continue to read on, Aaron starts to kind of tell a half truth. And, you know, he's using the right religious t uh, language, but he's talking about this cow. And he says, you know, he sees the cow and says, We're going to build an altar. So he builds an altar and he declares a feast to the Lord. Well, what's, who's the Lord that you're having this feast for? So they have a big feast and they have burnt offerings and dancing and drinking. So what Israel, the children of Israel and Aaron do, have done, they've broken, broken the first three commandments that God had given them in a couple lessons back when we talked about those ten commandments that the Lord handed down. And those first three, no God before me, they made this cow. No graven image, they made a golden cow, a golden calf. And then taking the Lord's name in vain this false worship of this golden calf because they even say you know Aaron says we're going to have a feast of the Lord after he's built this altar unto this golden calf so let's see how Moses and God responds to the foolishness of the children of Israel so let's read verses 7 through 10 and the Lord said unto Moses go get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stick, stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my right wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and will make of thee a great nation. So, we see God's response to this foolishness that the children of Israel have done. He sort of starts to separate himself from them. He tells Moses, thy people. Moses, them, your folks, <laughs> is what he's saying to him. You know, prior it was Moses always said, I come to you, Pharaoh, to tell in the name of the, the of God, saying, let my people go. They were God's people then, but now they are Moses' people. And God says that they're corrupt and they have done everything he commanded them not to do. And he asked Moses to leave him alone so that he can let his anger consume these stiff-necked people. <laughs> so let's see how Moses talks back to God after he says those things. So starting, let's read verses 11 through 14, the last verses of our lesson. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thou wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought? forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with mighty hand. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out 
to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which thought he thought to do unto his people. So Moses responds to the Lord by interceding on Israel's behalf. It's, that's what it means when he sought the Lord. So he begins to speak to the God to God on behalf of the people. And Moses starts out by talking about God's salvation, how he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. He then appeals to God, um, saying, "How would it look for you to kill these children you brought out of, of Egypt, out of bondage, just to bring them to the to the desert, to the mountain, to kill them?" And then he even appeals further by mentioning the patriarchs, the, the Israel patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who is also known as Israel. What I found most stunning about what uh, Moses says to God is, remember earlier in Exodus, Exodus Moses, he, come, he said he had a stuttering problem. He wasn't able to talk on behalf of God because of his stuttering problem, his slow tongue. But here he, he lays out a full defense for the children of Israel. And it's a successful intercession of defense of the people. Because he, it says that God repented of his evil. That translation in the King James, King James, many scholars disagree with that. Because how can a God sin against himself. It, it, there's no way for God to sin. So how can he repent of evil? So in other versions you will say it will say that God relented. He changed his mind. He had compassion on the children and he doesn't seek judgment against them the way he had originally thought that he would. So we have a few takeaways from today's lesson. First of all, we cannot make God into something he is not. Aaron and Israel, they try and make God into an image that they can see. God is a spirit, so how can you change him into a material thing? And we can't look down on these children of Israel because some of us do it today. We want to make our material possessions our God, and that is not who he is. He is a spirit. And so we cannot use material things as our God. Um, the second takeaway we can have from the lesson is whenever our loved ones, people in our lives, when they mess up, when they sin, we can't turn our backs on them. We have to intercede on their behalf. We have to talk to God on their behalf. Moses could have easily said, do your thing, God. The dumb people don't trip during the time I've been up here talking to you. So do what you got to do. But he doesn't. He starts to lay out a case for why God should not do something disastrous to the children. He intercedes. He gets God to, to give them a second chance, another chance. We, as, as Christians, we're called to intercede on others' behalf. We should t be able to talk to God in t uh, in, on behalf of someone else. So that is our lesson for this week. Um, next week, we will be continuing on in Exodus 32. And we're going to uh, have our lesson and it's going to be entitled God Confronts Sin and will be in Exodus 32 uh, verses 15 through 24. So uh, this is a fascinating series of scriptures and a uh, series of lessons to finish out the quarter and I hope to see you again next week. Have a great and awesome week.